Hello and welcome to the RA Visuals YouTube channel where you'll always find high quality visuals and high quality tech. And yes, I'm still missing a tooth, so let's just get it out of the way. There you go. Anyway, today we're going to be upgrading my gaming PC. Now, do I really need to upgrade my gaming PC? No, not at all. But when an awesome company like MSI comes to you and says, hey man, seems like your AIO is a bit small. Well, I came back to them and said, hey, it's 240 millimeters. That's not that bad if you know how to use it. But then they just came right back to me and said, but do you know what's better than 240 millimeters? 360 millimeters. And once again, I realized that what I have is just simply average. But no matter, because in the world of gaming PCs, you can always go bigger and better, unlike in real life where you're simply just stuck with what you got. But you know what you don't have to be stuck with? Paying a ton of money for Windows 10 and 11 CD keys when you use my discount at VIP UR CD key. VIP UR CD key has you covered with fully licensed codes to activate your favorite games and software. Purchasing your key is super easy. All you have to do is click on the item that you want, click buy to add it to your cart. Once in your cart, you can now enter my promo code RAV20. After adding the promo code, you'll see your savings pop up and you can then purchase your product with your chosen payment method. Finding and entering your Windows 10 CD key is super easy. All you have to do is go over to your user profile, find your purchase and click view keys and codes to reveal your new CD key. Then all you have to do is go to settings in Windows, click on update and security, click on activation, and finally click on change product key and paste your new key into the window and click next. You'll now have a fully licensed version of Windows 10 with no watermark. Check the links in the description to start saving now. All right, size jokes aside, today we really are adding an upgrade to my gaming PC back here by adding the Meg Core Liquid S360 all-in-one liquid cooler from MSI. Now they sent this over to me for review. It's not sponsored or anything. They just wanted me to check it out and tell you guys what I thought. And I am running an Alder Lake Intel build, which is known to run very hot. So I figured this would be a nice little addition to add a bit more cooling performance and some more style points because this cooler actually features a freaking LCD screen on it that lets you display a multitude of cool things on it and we'll get more into that here in just a minute but first I really want to see if this cooler is actually an upgrade as I already have a 240 millimeter liquid cooler in my system and as far as I know it's been cooling my system just fine for what I do with it so let's run a couple stress tests and see how my current setup performs and then we'll compare it to the S360 once we get it installed. For reference, my current cooling setup is a Castle 240EX AIO from Deepcool and it absolutely gets the job done for my system, but let's go ahead and really stress it out and see how it handles a couple of very heavy CPU workloads. Now to simulate these workloads, I'm gonna be using Cinebench R23 and run both the single core and multi-core tests and take the highest temps for whatever the system reaches. And it's worth mentioning before we start that my office here does have a very low ambient temperature because I'm in my basement, so excessive heat from the summer outside and whatnot, it should not even be a problem because it's usually really chilly down here. Now getting things started with the single core test using my 240 millimeter AIO, we only hit a max of 53 degrees Celsius as it only taxes one core out of the 12 my 12700K has, so we'll have to see what the multi-core does. And for the multi-core test, using my 240 millimeter AIO, we hit a max of 88 degrees Celsius, as this completely taxes everything on the CPU, and this is where you're gonna see the most high temps because it uses pretty much everything it can. All right, so now that we have our baseline for comparison, let's take out my 240 millimeter AIO and swap in the S360 to see if it can cool our system down for some lower temperatures. So first, let's go ahead with the installation of the S360. The Core Liquid S360 is a 360 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler featuring three Silent Gale P12 120 millimeter fans and a really unique pump design that not only has a IPS screen on it, but it also has its own integrated 60 millimeter fan that helps cool your motherboard components as well. The Silent Gale P12 fans are extremely robust and have a lot of weight to them and feature a lot of anti-vibration rubber material to help reduce those vibrations and unwanted sounds. Now the first step in getting this thing installed is figuring out the proper orientation for your case. And now my case 
case. It only allows me to install a 360 millimeter radiator in the front of the case. So I'm gonna go ahead and install it in the front with the three fans pulling fresh air in from the front, especially since there is already a dust filter there to keep dust out of the build. Step two is installing the mounting bracket and my build uses LGA 1700. So if you're on the new platform, they do include all mounting hardware for it. All you have to do is adjust the screw holes on the end and then fit it to the back of your motherboard tray. With that done, I just gotta clean off some old thermal paste. Ew. You might want to do this too if you had an old CPU cooler on your CPU. And with your processor all clean, you can then go ahead and start the installation of the pump. What I found that made this pump installation easier was going ahead and routing the cables through the back of the case first, so that way they're out of your way when you actually want to screw the pump down to the processor. Now for LGA 1700, you just need these specific standoffs, so you go ahead and install those in each of the four screw down points. And once those are screwed into the retention bracket nice and tight, you can then check the pump and make sure you take the cover off of it. Make sure you do this, don't ever install it with the cover on. And then definitely take note that there already is thermal paste on the bottom of this CPU cooler, so you don't need to install your own. All you gotta do is basically just line it up with the screw down points and plop it right on there. Then you grab the four included bolts and then you screw them down to the standoffs and make sure they're nice and tight. You can actually do this with just your fingers because they bottom out once they're fully tightened. Then lastly, grab your screen cover and go ahead and stick it on top of the LCD screen. It is magnetic, so it will stick right to it. And then go ahead and peel off the sticker and do a nice little satisfying peel. But wait, we're not done yet. Remember how I told you to get those cables out of the way in the beginning? Well, we gotta plug a bunch of those in, so let's get started. The first cable I installed was the CPU fan cable, and now this allows you to actually control your fan speed and whatnot with your motherboard, so make sure you guys plug this in. Next, this unit uses SATA power to power the whole thing, so grab a SATA power cable off of your power supply and go ahead and plug it right in. Next, we gotta go ahead and get power to our three fans that are on our radiator, so I already routed them in the correct orientation that I wanted, so you go ahead and use the receptacles that come off of the pump and go ahead and plug each one of the fans in. And last, this unit requires USB power, so you need to go ahead and find a USB header on your motherboard and plug it in. With that done, we can then close up our case and go ahead and power the system on to see if it works. And it definitely does because we can see that new LCD screen powering on, showing some really cool graphics, and I cannot wait to mess around with it. Okay, now we have the S360 installed and it looks like it's running beautifully. So the first thing you need to do is download the MSI Center from their website and it will allow you to control the S360 and its IPS screen. The first thing that I personally did was change the direction of the screen on the pump so it will be facing the right way. This is actually very cool and it takes out a lot of the guesswork of orienting your pump on your motherboard. And changing the pump direction is not the only thing that you can do with this cooler, you guys. There's a ton of different settings you can do, so I'll quickly take you through a few of them. First and foremost, you start with this hardware monitor that is already on it. Um, it shows you anything that you go ahead and select right here, which is really, really cool. So you can monitor all your different things like your FPS and game, uh, GPU stuff right here, your radiator fan and pump frequency of your CPU, all that good stuff. And then you can, of course, change the look of it as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and just apply that real quick. And of course it changes the border. There's a couple of different things, um, but it looks really, really cool. And uh, I, I, this is just one of those premium features that you know you wouldn't find on another uh, cooler except one like this. So again, you can do stuff like uh, you can add videos and images. This is probably the most fun thing about this. And some of these can be GIFs as well. So they can actually be moving pictures. So for instance, this is one of the uh, stock ones that comes with it. And you can make it this really, really cool, like, I don't know, swirly rainbow thing. And then there's the MSI Dragon, of course. It does some really cool stuff as well. Um, I don't know, man. Whatever you guys want, you can find some really cool stuff. This one right here is probably my favorite that I found. And it adds this, like, really cool swirly RGB color looking thing to it. And it just really adds a super huge, unique uh, feature, you know, or look to your, to your cooler. So, but then you can go ahead and put, like, say, the clock on there and go like this and press apply. And then now you have the time on there and do that. So you can you can pretty much add whatever you want on here, which is really cool. Um, and then if you do go ahead and sync your location with it, you can also display the weather. And for those of you that like to tweak everything, you can go ahead and customize your fan setting from here too. And you can completely, you know, drag these little sliders right here, do whatever you guys want, make your own fan curves, completely custom whatever you want to do. All right, fancy fans and features are all well and good, but does the S360 perform? It should come as no surprise that in fact, it definitely does. For the single core test using the S360, we hit a max of only 43 degrees Celsius, which shows an improvement of 10 degrees. So it looks like we're already seeing quite an improvement in terms of cooling. And this improvement carried over to the multi-core test 
as we only hit a max of 71 degrees Celsius when fully maxing out our 12700K and taxing all 12 cores. And in case you don't feel like doing any math, that's a 17 degree difference, which in my eyes is massive. So guys, for the price of $250, you're getting pretty much a top of the line all-in-one liquid cooler that'll allow you to keep even the spiciest of CPUs at bay while also giving you pretty much every customization option you could ever want from a CPU cooler. Come to think of it, the only thing that is really missing is, you know, RGB, because I know you're all gonna say it. Yeah, they chose to keep the fans stealthy, but in my opinion, I don't really mind because if you're looking for something to show off in your case, the LCD screen makes up for it in a big way with all of the really cool things you can do with it. Anyway, that's just my opinion, so if you're looking for a no-compromise CPU cooler, it'll be linked down below so you can check it out. And also, while you're down there, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel with those notifications on if you're not already so that you can see more tech content from me coming at you very soon. Anyway, that's going to be it for me in this one. You guys have an awesome day, and I'll catch you next time.